When I was 20, I was working on my honors thesis at school, which was a one woman show. And after a conversation with a family member, I just realized there was a lot of internal racism and self-hate that was being described to me, particularly when I was told to fix my hair, that I needed to write about it. And so the hair poem came out of my body and out of my mind when I was 20 years old, and it was in response to being taught that I needed to straighten my hair every single weekend in order to be beautiful or elegant or acceptable. And I had internalized that. And the poem kind of forced me to navigate a different level of integrity. You know, I can't perform or say a poem out loud about my ancestors and what it's like to rebel against this cultural norm and then still be engaging in what at the time was very much a practice of self-hate. I have performed that poem for many, many years and my family dynamic has changed. My relationship with my hair has changed. And I realized that in order for that poem to continue being honest, it was going to also have to be revised a little bit. So inheritance, this new revision of the hair poem was less of a war cry in the way that the hair poem was and almost more of a gathering. I want mothers and aunties and sisters to be able to read this poem with their little sisters, with their nieces, with their daughters, and it be a poem about love, and it be a poem about here's a reclamation that we can all participate in. And that's my hope, right? That it'll be an intergenerational invitation for folks to rethink on what we have inherited when you're part of the African diaspora and what it means to be proud, right? And feel safe in whatever aspect of your identity you live and perform on a daily basis. That, you know, you too are welcome at the table. <laughs>